Hi and welcome back to the Gemhawks YouTube channel. Today I wanted to show you quite a traditional way of making a chain link from segments of wire. You will need a couple of different tools. You'll need some good flat facing pliers, some round nose pliers and some really nice cutters. They don't have to be flush cutters but you do get a nicer finish if you can have a reasonably decent quality pair of cutters. And the only other material that you need is wire. Today I'm working with one millimetre gauge antique bronze colour coated copper wire, always a mouthful getting all the details out, but any one millimetre wire will do. So I'm going to show you what we're looking to create, which is a really nice substantial chain known in some circles as Egyptian link chain or Egyptian link. So I'm going to show you the various stages that we will go through and this is one of those things much like rosary linking where it pays you to get ahead of the game and prepare lots of little pieces of wire all the same length before we start. Now just for your information the segments of wire as I say they're one millimeter gauge I'm using today are just over four inches or almost 11 centimeters in length. So if you want to make a really substantial piece with Egyptian chain link and you want it to look the particular way that mine is looking today that is around about the 11 centimeter mark which is just over four maybe four and a quarter inches in length so if we go down to the board I'm going to show you the various segments that we'll be looking at so I've pre-cut a couple of segments of the one millimeter gauge wire and we're going to go through these stages now what I tend to do when I'm creating a long length of chain link wire in this fashion is I will prep maybe 20 or so segments of wire at any one time and I'll use a master length so to speak uh, which you will then be able to pop up against your reel of wire and just use that to create exactly the same length over and over again if it's a couple of millimeters off it doesn't really matter either that or use a ruler each time so I'm going to move the finished piece out of the way for now and at the end of the video I'll show you some variations. So to begin with we're just going to pre-warm the wire, it helps if it's reasonably straight and what I tended to use for this particular piece is a marker pen. So this is my trusty sharpie that goes pretty much everywhere with me and I would pop that in the centre of the wire and create that into a U-shaped form. Pre-warming will, will help that to go a little bit more smoothly. Now you can see here that the underside there is slightly shorter, so all I would do is move that over and open the other side up so that we are then left with a perfect U-shape which is equal in its aspect. So the next thing we're going to do is come in with the round nose pliers and create a loop which sits outwards. I'm going to do that on both sides. So to start off with, we do have a video that is all about creating the perfect coil but just get that to go with your round nose pliers to begin with and then using any flat facing pliers you can squash that down as you go giving it a little bit more strength and rigidity and you would need to as you're going along make sure that you're getting the same amount coiled up either side so what I tend to do is to have a little section like this which I use as a master which I will match up the coils as we move through the different parts. And if you do go a little bit too far, you can always unwind that ever so slightly and just bring that back to true. So we're going to take our third segment here and turn it into segment number four. Again, with the round nose pliers quite close to the end of the tip of the pliers as well. Give that a good grip to get that going and turn that into a coil. It does sometimes slip out of your hand, especially if you're warm as I am today. It's an unseasonably warm January day here in Oxfordshire. So continue to coil that up. And as, as I say, I would refer back to my master all the time to make sure that they were the same dimension. So I can see I've gone a little bit too far on that side as well. So just draw that back down a little bit, draw that back down a little bit. And you know that that's going to be the right size. Now, in order to retain that beautiful circular shape in the centre, I would return back to my marker pen and just push those gently together. And to keep them identical, I'm actually using the size of the pen, pushing those two circles until they sit in the middle. And in that way, I know that when I get to this section, they're all going to be pretty much the same. So the next technique that we're going to use is just to turn the ends up. And if I bring this to the centre of the board, you'll be able to see that all we're doing is turning them both up at 90 degrees 
So they look a little bit like a, a weird Omega shape. And the way that I do this, because obviously my pliers are the same length, as the same width rather, here as they are here, but they do taper in this direction. So if you go in this fashion and twist up, you can end up with slightly twisted coils. So what I tend to do is make sure that they're pushed together really firmly and take in these lovely long tip across the broad tip across the end there and then push the loop up rather than trying to push the coils up. So you'll see that we have them and they're still very, very centralised and they're still sitting in quite a nice fashion. So I would now return to my bent chain nose pliers or your other flat facing pliers and just draw each of those back onto the main loop as carefully as you can so you don't disrupt that loop shape at the bottom so that you would move on to the last section just here and at this point I would want to have several of these ready to go so I can link them all together now there is a little subtle difference I don't know if you can see when they're flat on the board but as I turn them up you'll be able to see that my coils are kind of going away at a 30 degree angle and what I actually want to do is to tilt them so they're a bit like owl's eyes coming out to either side and I will show you now how to do that so I'm just going to grab hold of that coil that we've created and just sit it down inside that beautiful oval kind of shape that we've got going around the edge there and it depends which hand dominant you are but you can get that to sit quite neatly just by tilting it and then fiddling around with it until that sits identically. Now the last segment of this demonstration is to link them all together. Now because we've got large coils and small hoops this is quite easy. I place them all with the coils that are tilted upwards on your board and then you can just loop that over the one side and just push it down into the gap, loop it over the other side this section is now done, so what I would do is grip the uh, little segment that we've created down below and then push those coils back flat. I've deformed that one slightly, so I'm just going to reshape it before I bring the next one in. So the loop over one side, then over the other, draw it down so that it is as far in this direction as you can get it before squishing these pieces down and you would continue until you have the length of chain that you desire. So I made this piece into a bracelet and this is exactly the same size. So as I say, that segment is 11 centimetres or about four and a quarter inches in length. Many, many times over, you will always find use for lengths of wire, especially in a one millimetre gauge. So if you cut too many, it's in fact easier than cutting too few. Because if you get into a flow and you're kind of doing a little production line, then it's really nice to just be able to continue. So the piece I've created today is a bracelet. And I've made quite a simple little loop on the end and that will fit around. But you can make that into necklaces or you can use it into sections of asymmetrical, ne asymmetric rather, necklaces, however you want to use it. What I want to show you in a second is how to alter up the variations. So exactly the same technique, but what I have done with this little segment of alternative design is I have made the coils on either side smaller and the central loop larger. So I'm just going to go back to the board now and open up the segment that we've created. This is the design as we talked through. But if you have smaller coils and larger loops, you can make a chain that looks a little bit like this. So this kind of in my eyes, if you follow the logic, looks a bit like elongated Aztec skulls or elongated Peruvian skulls. I forget where they're from, don't quote me. Not the sort of person that would know that knowledge. <laughs> but that is a really, really cool design and you can use that exactly in the same way as you would as a bracelet or as a necklace. It's a really lovely coil linking design and once you have squished down and you've made sure that these pieces are in position properly and you can do that by hand rather than by pliers that's really quite a secure little chain to be using. So that today is your Egyptian link or your Egyptian chain however you prefer to know it. I hope that's been a helpful demonstration for you today. Uh, you can use it in many different ways but it does look really cool on the wrist because you can kind of see the intricacies of it. So I'm Gem Hall thank you for sticking with me thank you for watching the demonstration with me today i hope you're having a wonderful wonderful time wherever you are whatever you're doing 
on Facebook on a Monday evening GMT 8pm I tend to do a live broadcast on my Facebook page and that's often with metaphysical items or cabochons or other such gorgeous goodies if you care to join me that would be wonderful uh, do feel free to share the channel and Sunday of next week I think it is we're going to be drawing a winner from the YouTube video all about hitting 500 subscribers so if you've not already dropped a comment on the 500 subs uh, video here on YouTube then please do if you wish to be in a chance with winning I thought I'd lost it for a minute then this oversized pendant and that will come out to somebody in the next couple of weeks have a beautiful day and I hope to see you very very soon lots of love bye <laughs>